What is up, everybody? Steve here. I hope you are doing well. Um, there's a lot of talk in the news right now, a lot of things going on. And I think one of the big questions or debates that is going on is, are we in a recession based on the latest news pertaining to uh, negative GDP in the second quarter? Um, when you guys get time, if you have time, go ahead and Google, uh, did the White House change the definition of a recession? There's an ongoing debate about that as well. I'm going to read what the White House puts out pertaining to uh, what a recession is. Uh, it goes on to say, while some maintain two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP constitute, constitute a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. Instead, both officials determine determinations of recessions and economists' assessments of economic activity are based on holistic look at the data, including the labor market, consumer and business spending, industrial production, and incomes. Based on these data, it is unlikely that the decline in GDP in the first quarter of this year, even if followed by another GDP decline in the second quarter, indicates a recession. Now, I mean, this is completely up to your interpretation of what they're saying, what they're trying to convey. But if you could drop it in the comments, I mean, if you believe that we are in a recession based on the data of the second quarter GDP coming in uh, negative 0.9 then let me know. If you don't, let me know. Maybe maybe explain why why you think that we're not in a uh, recession. The, th the problem that I have with all these government officials and the Fed and everybody else is the, the severe manipulation of everything, even the CPI, which we're going to get into as well in terms of you know, the, the real cost of inflation compared to what the government entities are putting out there in front of us. So GDP, um, first quarter, we are at negative 1.6. All the economists out there said that we were going to have a growth of positive 0.3. Obviously, that didn't happen. And then second quarter came out uh, negative 0.9 for the second quarter. So are we in a recession? I don't know. Uh, Mark Zandi, from, uh, the chief economist from Moody, says, we're not in a recession but it is clear the economy's growth is slowing. Now, again, if you have time, go ahead and, and uh, do a little bit of research on Moody's and also what happened in the last real estate recession pertaining the information that uh, Moody's is putting out there. And uh, they also settled a bunch of lawsuits for false information putting out there. So um, there is an agenda, I believe, and you know, again, everybody has their opinions. You don't have to rely on my opinion, but there is an agenda with the Fed and the government, um, you know, also coming into a re-election or an election cycle in November as well. Um, obviously, uh, certain politicians want to get re-elected and they want to make sure that the economy looks as good as it is. The problem that we're facing with all these politicians, in my opinion, and I'm not here to get political in any sense, is people are feeling, despite the bullshit numbers that they're putting out there, people are feeling the effects of high inflation. And it, it's you can't hide that. You can't hide the cost of fuel and everything else. Um, let's talk about yesterday's Fed rate hike. Uh, they went up uh, another 75 basis points. Um they raised the federal fund rate by another 75 basis points to 2.25% to 2.5%. Uh, it's uh, designed to control persistent inflation. The decision can increase the cost of mortgage borrowing the and further uh, uh, slow down home sales. And um, as the housing sector is particular, particularly interest rate sensitive, and this is going to have a devastating effect on other short-term debt, um, a lot that businesses have taken out. And I've been talking about this on the channel for a bit. I think that we're going to see high, um, uh, a, signi a significant amount of layoffs in the future because a lot of these businesses are relying on cheap debt. That debt does adjust. Same thing with you guys. If you have credit card debt, do everything you can to get out of it. Um, if you guys are shopping for a car and you're taking debt, I mean, it, it, it's going to be more and more expensive. So 
I would just say uh, be cautious with any kind of adjustable debt, especially with these HELOC loans that everybody's trying to do as well. Um, I don't think it's it's necessarily wise to take a HELOC loan and um, do anything that's, you know, I've heard stories on this channel where you guys are great, by the way. Uh, some of these stories are just, I, I know it's there because I've experienced it in the past, but people are taking out HELOC loans and they're literally buying trucks they're buying cars they're buying boats they're buying motorcycles they're finishing their basements they're putting pools in their homes and uh and then you have some other people that are pulling out or having the line of credit and they're waiting to utilize that for strategic investments which if you guys are careful and you're strategic about it thumbs up just be careful because uh you know the the interest on these are just going to continue to rise um CPI for June came in at 9.1%. That's up from 86 in May. And, uh, you know, as we all know, um, I don't think anybody can sit here intelligently and, and speak to us and say that the, um, the, the, the cost of everything has gone up 9.1%. I think it's ridiculous. So um, anyway, the CPI is flawed, basically, in my opinion. Um, all right, let's get into some real estate news here. If you guys don't follow uh Wolf Street, all, all everything I'm talking about too are in the uh description below so you guys can access that. Um, you got a really, really good site, it's free. This guy is is pretty damn bright. Uh, his name's Wolf Richard, and um, he's got a site called Wolf Street, and I encourage you guys to take a look at his site. Um, he, he has multiple articles that come out pretty much every single day. And, uh, and he's got, he, he does a really, really good job at explaining everything in detail. Excuse me a sec. Um, this is big. This is, this is, um, so real quick this morning, I get an email. Like I told you, tell you guys, I'm on multiple, uh, drips for different communities, everything else. And uh, a lot of the home builders list their properties on MLS and a specific community here locally, uh, called was it seasons at Bonita Springs, something like that. Uh, DR Horton, they sent, I think it was, uh, probably about eight listings that got emailed today alone, all with big price reductions. So I know there was other people commenting saying, yeah, we're going to see incentives, but we're not going to see price reductions. And, uh, it's just not true the, right now we have over nine months of supply of new homes. And, um, Basically, he's going on to say it's the highest since the housing bust. The median price of new single family houses were sold in June, plunged 9.5% from May to 402,000 lowest since June of last year. So um, that's a significant increase. I mean, you're talking almost 10%. Uh, this was ne nevertheless uh, an extraordinary plunge of magnitude that occurred only three times before in data going back to 1965 during the second dip of the double dip recession, which was in 1981 during the housing bust, October, 2010, and in September, 2014. Uh, sales of new single family houses dropped 8.1% from May. Uh, that's down 17.4% from a year ago. Um, you know, several months back, I mean, I, I've been talking about, um, you know, builders are going to be in trouble and, uh, I got some flack for it and I get it. Like, you know, when, when everything's great and everything's looking good and, and, and we're just looking at a positive future, um, you know, it's, it's hard to see the, the, the negativity that could come into the market. And I was saying that we're going to see significant slowdown. We're going to see more inventory hit the market. We're going to see some communities be half built. We're going to see vacant lots, uh, half built homes that are probably going to get bulldozed. And um, it's it's just because of supply and demand. Be, you know, even right now for resale homes, um, we're still pretty low in terms of month supply, but it is steadily increasing. But new construction is just going to get hammered. I mean, nine nine um, over nine months supply of new uh, new construction homes, single family homes is, is very, very significant. We all need to pay attention to it, which if you guys are in the 
in the process of buying a home right now um, in, in certain areas. I mean, you guys definitely have a, a leg up. Uh, similar drops in sales occurred with existing home sales were plunged 14% in June from a year ago. Uh, supply of unsold new houses spiked to 9.3 months of sales, same as in May of 2010. Um, so comparing just coming out of, uh, well, I guess we're still in the real estate recession in 2010. Um, but that was roughly about the same for new construction in terms of uh, the amount of uh, new construction available month supply. Um, and also in August of 2020 for new construction, we had uh, roughly about 3.3 months of supply just to give you an idea. Now there was a lot of issues with new construction in terms of uh, supply chain issues and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to discount that at all, but um, I kind of had a feeling that we were going to be overbuilding regardless. And I, honestly, the supply chain issues, uh, IV Zellman said this perfectly, the supply chain issues are, have actually, the destruction of the supply chain issues have ex actually uh, helped the builders because if there were no supply chain issues, they would have built a lot more homes a lot faster. And that basically slowed down things. So Builders that are um, stuck with inventory right now, they would probably have a he heck of a lot more inventory if there were not supply chain issues back when. Uh, the stocks of home builders are down between 24% and 36% year to date. DR Horton down 31%, Lennar down 31%, Pulte down 24%, NVR down 26%, Taylor Morrison 23%, Meritage down 30%, KB Homes. 30% Century, 30% or 36% LGI homes down 33%. 15% um, of all home sales were canceled in the month of June. Uh, 17 and so we got 15% of all home sales were canceled in June. The start of the pandemic when everybody was freaking out and basically things came to a standstill and they were like, you know, the world is ending. We have this thing that's going on. And um, anyway, at that point in time, our cancellation nationwide was 17.6%. In June, cancellation rate 15%. That is significant for the amount of people that are walking away from contracts. Um, home sales down 14% from a year ago. Now, current month supply of inventory still very low. Um, obviously, with cancellations and home sales slowing and everything else, inventory is starting to build up. And I foresee we're going to continually see build um, more inventory build up. And uh, anyway, June, it was about three months supply. May, it was 2.6. So obviously, we're increasing. But January, the beginning of this year was 1.6. So we were significantly higher than the beginning of the year. Um, we still have a long way to go in terms of uh, supply uh, to come to market. I anticipate it's going to happen in my professional opinion. I think we're going to see a lot more uh, existing home sale or home supply come to market over the next several months. And um, I, I think by the end of the year, we'll probably be at maybe six months supply of inventory, maybe into Q1 next year. Um Inventory up 2.4% since last June. And what does this all mean? Um, I kind of want to get your take as well in terms of everything going on, a lot of economic turmoil. Um, I think that, you know, despite all the negative news and everything else, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. Um, there are two things that I'm personally looking at in the future. Uh, one is buying existing build uh, businesses that are not necessarily going to require my time to invest in. And hopefully we can, you know, outsource, you know, certain uh, controllers of businesses. But I think that uh, there's going to be significant amount of uh, baby boomers who own businesses that want to retire and get out. Uh, right now there, I think there's like maybe like 2 million businesses on the, maybe one and a half million businesses on the market for sale right now. A good website to take a look at. It's, it's kind of a cool site. Uh, it's called bizbuysell.com. So take a look at that bizbuysell.com. And you can just look in your local area, your local market and see what's available for sale. 
a lot of these owners will um, do owner financing as well. So keep that in mind. I mean, there's a, a lot of owners that just want to transition out. You might be able to buy a business with no money out of pocket. And you're basically buying this business, showing to the owner that you are confident in your abilities to grow that business and provide them maybe a, a besides owner financing, but a continued royalty for the, the rest of their lives. There, there's a lot of different ways of structuring it. And secondly, I will be looking into distressed assets. I know I promise you guys, I'll take you guys through some uh, foreclosures and, and, and some of the offers and everything else. Things are still in Southwest Florida. We're um, still seeing a, a significant lack of um, foreclosures and short sales hit the open market. Again, I am working on some other ways to attract um, off market uh, sellers, more motivated sellers. And I'm going to bring you guys through that process too, that you guys could potentially replicate and work on, um, to, uh, to basically buy properties off market, no competition, create win-win situations and usually get properties at a discount as well. Um, we're 16 minutes in, I'm going to jump into any questions or comments or anything that you guys got. Um, recession now, was lost. There are slowdowns here in Michigan all over from home goods to housing market prices. We were definitely in a recession. Man, there's a, uh, Jolie and I went to a, uh, a restaurant the other day. It's in North Naples, right off of US 41, main drag. And uh, this restaurant is like in the out parcel closest to, to US 41. And the, um, the strip center that's behind it, still visible from 41, has a, a bed, bath and beyond. That store is going out of business. It's got like a five guys. It's got a staples. I don't know if the staples is going out of business, but um, it, the rest of the, the complex is completely vacant. And there was an end cap and that end cap was actually going to be like a smaller grocery store chain. And I don't even think that they ever opened up, but I, you know, I was out there the other day. I was just astonished of prime prime location um, in Naples main main corridor main corridor for visibility and these places are sitting vacant so um you know the the retail sector is getting nailed and look the the bed bath and beyond that's going out of business that those are jobs that people are going to lose and um as mentioned you know i i think that we're going to see a significant amount of businesses surface showing their um their their over leveraged a lot of them are just going to be over leveraged and the, the cheap money is no longer cheap enough to basically pay their bills, pay their employees, they're insolvent. And a lot of these companies I think are going to surface. And I think we're going to see a lot more layoffs in the future. And I think that's going to be one of the main things because uh, Powell keeps talking like his only, if you listen to him, his only thing, uh, his only defense is, the uh, the job market and how strong the job market is. And uh, I'm just like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it I don't, I'm not claiming to be an economist in any sense, but uh, I think that if, if those stats are correct, I think those numbers will turn. Um, one, it's whatever sleepy Joe says for sure. <laughs> uh, sleepy Joe's brains in a recession. Uh, JJ Ayers, exactly. Government doesn't want panic and have a crash. The government can't save like they did in 2008. Uh, JJ Ayers, I, I agree a lot that I'm researching and reading and everything else is, you know, they, they had the ability to do a lot of bailouts and everything else. And um, we, we haven't seen significant inflation like this in a long time. And uh, the, the amount of debt is that's out there, whether it's consumer or government debt is just astronomic. So um, there's not going to be bailouts. I don't believe like it was, there'll probably be some bailouts like cherry picking and everything, but um, when the furnaces fire up in the fall and heating oil, eight to 10 per gallon, I Gunther, I agree. I mean, I think, uh, the, the fall and winter months for a lot of people in a lot of different states is going to be a it's going to be a rough winter. Um, what about the Miami housing market? Prices are still high. Any hope for buyers? 
Yeah, I mean, again, I think that people just need to be patient. Um, again, we're we're set, we're out of this place on Sunday. We did a lease back here. We locked in a six month rental, and I'm just being patient. I it sucks, but I I anticipate values are going to go down, and we're going to see some really good deals in the future. So, um, prior, I I predicted in another video because uh, real estate is all lagging because you know it takes a good 30 to 60 days to close out a piece of real estate. So I predict that we'll actually start to see in the fall, the fall data um, where we'll actually see the values actually turn that corner and we'll see closed sales actually be lower than previous closed sales in previous months. Um, and I think once that happens too, then sellers are, it'll be a switch for sellers. And I saw this in the last last crash. Um, and we're right now we're in that denial um, situation where sellers just think that their houses are worth a crazy amount, and they are reducing prices. A lot of them, I think, uh, here in Florida, I think like ha uh, like fifty percent are are reducing prices, and uh, I think Boise, Idaho, is like seventy percent are reducing prices. Something crazy. So some sellers are getting on board, but I don't think that they're reducing enough at this point in time. And then in the fall, when everything catches wind that, oh, wow, our property values actually declined when that data comes out, then I think the panic is going to start to set sail. So I would uh, pay attention to the fall data. <clears throat> uh, Hodges, thank you for being here. Um, T, I think I know you applied. The rents are too high. I don't think they care to fill the space. Look into, I did a video on this. Uh, just type my name in commercial mortgage backed securities. Look, watch that video. I don't know if it's related to that space or not, but when they take debt, they, based on the banking institution, they can't reduce that uh, rent without basically the bank calling that note or them offsetting basically the valuation in terms of a, a cap rate. So they'll actually have to go to the bank. If they like, let's say they're taking, they they're supposed to get 10 grand per month for one unit and they take eight grand, that $2,000 spread, they actually have to offset and pay out of pocket to the lending institution. So we're going to see a lot more of that. And unfortunately, a lot of pensions are tied to the commercial mortgage backed securities. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. But um, I, I think that is the issue for a lot of these strip centers and malls and office buildings and stuff like that. Do you think it's a bad idea to purchase a house right now? Um, yeah, you know, some areas probably won't even be affected by uh, a real estate recession or anything. So depends on where you're at. Um, me personally, I think that the market is significantly high where I'm at in Florida and where I concentrate. And I personally, I think it would be a bad idea just, just for me. I'm not a financial advisor. I think uh, prime example in this complex, there's two listings, one of which we have listed and it, it unfortunately it's just sitting. And then the other one, um, that came to market, I think it's 705,000 on the beach here in Bonita and uh, went into contract, came back to market and now it's just, it's been sitting. So, um, you know, I, I think prices will come down. Um, Sheldon, let them claim we are not in a recession. Yeah. Yeah, all they're doing is just trying to slow things down before the lecture, lecture elections i can't talk today sean and wendy god is amazing stevie do service in gulf breeze florida um i don't but we could probably help you guys out if you need an agent in florida we have a lot of agents throughout florida you guys can always email info at steveinvests.com uh peter schiff are you the real peter schiff Seller should sellers be offended by low ball offers. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through some low ball offers. I have um, some content are recorded for conversations uh, of me calling real estate agents to pull out motivation from um, 
these agents some of the information that should not be disclosed, but you know, it, we want to find out motivation on the seller in order to get a good deal. I'm not afraid in any sense to put low offers out there. I look at it that twofold. I mean, it, it's got to make sense for, for us when we're buying real estate, investing in real estate, but also in many times, like if you're able to come in, you know, cash, quick close, you're helping that person out, get out of that property, even if they don't get the price that they want. So people will be offended by your offers. There's no doubt. I'm of the mindset too, is, you know, you look at literally dozens and dozens of properties and make offers on a third of them and see, you'll start to find out who's motivated and who's not. And also what we, in my experience in buying real estate is you, you put an offer out there. And then what I do is I try to ping that agent or that owner at least every 30 days, if it's still sitting on market. And then I'm just going to ping them and be like, Hey, you know, our offer of, you know, 350 still stands if you're still interested and people's circumstances change. Cause, and again, we're in this transitioning period where sellers think that the property is worth a lot more. And uh, they start to realize, wow, you know, that I've been sitting on this property for another 30 days since his offer and, uh, you know, no action, no activity. Maybe we should just go ahead and take the offer. So it's important with that follow up work when you guys put offers out there as well. Um, But don't be afraid to make offers. When you buy, you're planning to buy with cash or 30 percent down. How will that look for you? Uh, some will be cash. I want to take advantage of uh, some financing in the future um, and even do some refis of properties that we pay cash when rates come down, if they come down, who knows. Um, but I, I think a lot of it will be cash. And and I've got other uh, other partners that we can compile cash for the right properties. Uh Yeah, find find a, a uh, JJ. Find an agent that's willing to work with you and put the work in. Um, even if it's a new a, new agents, green agents are probably going to be more inclined to put a bunch of offers out for you because they, in many cases, they're not busy. Um, so you, but it's up to you to really uh, analyze the deal and make sure it's the right deal. Um, I still think the market is is crazy high. And I think we have a long way to go um, before we start seeing significant drops. How about buying foreclosures? I did another video this week on uh, finding pre foreclosures. So uh, you guys might want to take a look at that. There's a, it's a system called Red X. I got it in the description below as well. There's like an affiliate link in there. But basically what that, that system does, it scrubs all the Liz pendants, basically pending uh, lawsuits for foreclosure. And um, you, if you, and it has their phone numbers, everything else, if you can get in contact with them before it gets foreclosed on, then you might be able to, uh, to basically save them from foreclosure and get a deal. But the problem is a lot of people might be over leveraged but some might not be. Um, and that you got to find the kind of needle in the haystack and go through a lot of properties. Um, and then the foreclosures on the market right now, I just checked our local MLS. There's 15 for sale right now. Um, the the listing agents on these foreclosures sometimes are really difficult to work with. Um, by the way, if you're a real estate agent, you want to list foreclosures. I got, a link in the description for you guys too on that. But listing agents for foreclosures, a lot of times you can't even get them on the phone. And a lot of times there's a, um, an, basically an auction site that you actually have to bid through uh, depending on what auction site that they use. Guermo in the process of buying new construction today and they called me to tell me a $10,000 discount. What do I do? Um... I don't know. I mean, do you really need a house right now? If you can be patient uh, and you're in Georgia, I know the Atlanta market is just getting smashed right now. Um, but if they're offering a $10,000 discount right now, what will that look like? You know, six months from now, who knows? I anticipate down 
Philip, it would honestly be better to officially declare a recession, being in a recession like economy. I agree. I think it's all political. And I think that, uh, unfortunately, they are doing what they do. Nothing has really changed there. How much paperwork for a realtor to do lowball offers? Um, I don't like giving verbal offers, so there is paperwork associated with it. Um, you know, writing writing the contracts and everything else. So, you know, there's a certain amount of, of paperwork, but it's, you know, our, and every state's different. We have a state contract here. Um, we write it up on the FAR bar as is contract, which actually allows you to back out of the contract within a certain period of time during your inspection period as well and get your escrow back. And you don't really need any reason to back out. I love that contract for that reason. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to renegotiate that contract as well. Um, so if you guys get in a contract, if you have a similar contract, as always consult with the right professional in your area or a real estate attorney, but like the far bar, we'll put in like seven days for inspection and then we'll go through it. And if there's a lot more things that come up, then we'll, instead of, you know, we won't require the seller to fix anything, but we'll just try to get a better price because there was unforeseen things like the HVAC system's not working. There's a roof leak or whatever the case is. And then we'll uh, try to get a better deal. And we, you know, and I'm not trying to pull one over on anybody in that scenario, but like there's, there's time associated with it. So if, uh, if we need a new roof, especially right now with, the the uh, the delays on everything and e even if that roof is going to cost us say thirty thousand bucks we I look at it like that's you know additional time additional management additional work on our behalf and uh, you know so I want to increase that thirty to maybe thirty five to compensate for just dealing with another contractor on the property. <clears throat> um. What's up, Anthony? Over here in Orlando, market booming. Any thoughts on that? I mean, uh, I think Orlando has been overly built, and I, I think that that market will turn. Um, we're seeing a decline in buyers waiving inspections, being more uh, due diligence. <laughs> think about this, guys. And I, I'll kind of end on this. It was not long ago, and this is a great freaking point that uh, JJ is bringing up. It was not long ago when there were lines out the door. You would list the property. You would get 40 offers, um, well above asking price. You're financing, but you're putting it as a cash deal. No inspection period. No appraisal contingency. Like, look how rapidly the market has shifted. And again, not all markets are shifting as aggressively because you know, that's, uh, you know, real estate is micro, but um, it's amazing just how quickly things have just kind of taken a U-turn. And uh, I don't recall it being this uh, aggressive for the reversal in the, in the last crash. I don't. And I experienced that last crash. We helped a lot of people do uh, short sales and it was, it was devastating times. And that's uh part of this channel is trying to help people just make better decisions and to grow your wealth and become financially free. And that's about it, guys. I do appreciate everybody being here and um, thanks for everything, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next video.